afternoon, guys. Um, thanks for the introduction. My name is David, and I'm working with uh, Professor Erki Sutunen, who is the head of the University of Tuku overseas campus here in Namibia. And today I'll be presenting a paper entitled Co-Designing Digital Expressions of Faith with African Youth, Reshaping the Affordances of the Metaverse. So technology is evolving tremendously, changing the way humans think, act, and interact. It's become a huge part of our daily lives, while uh, churches, for the most part, have kind of remained the same with very little to almost no adaption of modern technology. So during the pandemic, um, the move of churches from physical to virtual attendance has made them a lot more accessible and attractive to those unable to attend for whatever constraints such as physical constraints or just an unwillingness to participate due to uh, the pandemic. So the metaverse is the latest approach in online technology, allowing people to immersively interact with each other and express their faith in a virtual or 3D environment through the means of artificial intelligence, remote presence, extended reality, high speed internet and robotics. The affordance of a remote faith community to contribute to the universal church by their contextual interpretations at the same time align their narratives with the classical theological formulations, opening them up to people they would otherwise have never met. And this is important in Africa that uh, suffers from being separated by borders, unlike say Europe where um, everyone can kind of visit each other. So faith can be expressed by all senses, um, creating digital artifacts such as NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which can be viewed by those who join the metaverse and actually create discussions for a broader audience that uh, would otherwise be inaccessible. Now, to understand the affordances of a metaverse by digital theology, we co-design with uh, unemployed youth in Jorgas, an instance of the metaverse by which the physical parish can co-express their faith with those in other parts of the world through virtual worlds and by using the existing church buildings as a base. So this allows the congregational members living in one of the least developed towns in Namibia to better understand their faith from different viewpoints and also express it better. So we'll explore how digital theology can reshape the current use and vision of the metaverse. And this will be achieved by collaborating with leaders and members of different congregations to understand their reflections on the metaverse its contribution to Africa and what it means to Africa. So I spoke about co-design and what is co-design? A co-design approach is one where participants are together from the beginning. Everything is open. So say in the case of um, we had a digital theology um, course that was conducted by the University of Tuku, where from the beginning um, the students in collaboration with the lecturers, work together to actually set up uh, all the schedules, set up the idea of exactly what activities you're going to do. And this um, this just gives a, a deeper understanding for everyone as to what's going on because you are in charge of planning. You're not just uh, a student who's sitting down and receiving some sort of lectures uh, from someone else. And um, a co-design approach does require a flexible, agile development. And I spoke of a metaversity and what is a metaversity? A metaversity is simply the universe that goes beyond the usual by connecting staff, students and other interested parties using metaverse technology. So the metaverse technology, I don't know if uh, you are familiar with it, but the metaverse is a virtual environment where users can participate and interact with each other using remote presence, extended reality technology. And the main features of a metaversity are extended reality. So in this case, uh, people can meet in these virtual chat rooms and see each other in a 3D environment, almost like being there together. There's a freedom to explore by an unorthodox method. So in this case, um, courses or the congregation can congregate together and just explore things that usually are taboo or not really talked about in the universities due to um, due to set structures and inside the metaversity learning is done by doing and being instead of um, the typical 
learning by listening and just existing. And it is also a bottom-up approach where the community is the one that makes the decisions instead of uh, the leaders of everything. So digital theology is an expression of faith by digital means and applying a co-design approach uh, to digital theology in terms of the metaversity, we can in fact uh, broaden the horizons of uh, digital theology. So what I mean by this is, for example, in Chorichas, uh, which I spoke of earlier, a group of uh, street engineers were identified and the church um, graciously decided to give us a room in their church so we could actually conduct a certain, as a, as a home base. So that home base can be extended and if connected using metaverse technology, then people from Chorichas can interact with people from Vinduk. Not only that, but people in South Africa using the metaverse technology, which is how we can apply it to a digital theology context. Also, um, I mean, digital artifacts such as uh, NFTs of faith can be applied. The design, the design approaches are almost limitless because it provides a digital environment for people to really explore their creativity and create uh, whatever they want, not just create, but uh, discuss and connecting people together using um, remote presence technology. So people say from Horikas would be able to interact with people from Finland or Europe, people they usually never meet in a more personal way using technology such as remote presence to create that uh, deeper bond between people. Okay, um, I thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, I think they should be answered in the breakout room. Thank you for your time.